Hi and welcome to my second video on technical fingering. If you haven't seen part one yet where I mentioned points one through five, I recommend you watch that one first and then you can start with point number six here. I will give you a lot of illustration in this one, so it will be plenty for you to observe and learn from. Number six. For fast unisons, try to find symmetrical fingerings for both hands, so meaning same group of fingers. The easiest example I can give you right away is this hand and exercise. So we have symmetrically using all of them back and forth as one position. So here is a group. Or something like this. You not you are not likely to use this if you have other fingers available. So you either you're going to use this or this. And here are some more examples for you. First, a very simple example of symmetrical fingering, something like this. Rather than, for example, something like this. So comfortable. Something more difficult, for example, this uh, Chopin Etude number 12, Revolutionary, where you have the passage starting over here. So we have this spot. So here you have fingering. I actually play with three here. In a way, you could consider it symmetrical fingering, meaning the same finger group four three two one they're not at the same time but here's also i i do three one two four still feels like it's this i'm using the same muscles same fingering same group over and over here it says two on this note but then again using same finger twice i prefer to avoid that so i use three for me this is one group it's sort of symmetrical but not exactly and then here you have symmetrical fingering, you can use five and this, so it kind of opens up. You can keep using five if you want. And here, just four. But uh, Jan Ecker edition, this suggests different fingering, so just and four. just to reuse this group like that grouping that we talked about before but the problem here is with thumb it's a black key so we're gonna uh, replace it with two here four fingers and you're gonna say wait a second this is also a black key why thumb here okay but here not okay um, look how the thumb is approached here it's a very cramped space here to go for thumb, from four to thumb here. It's extremely uncomfortable. Where here, it's actually quite easy to go with thumb, unlikely to miss, and it's quite comfortable. So this is okay. Again, there's always some rules that are there to be broken, so that's all right. I find this to be more agile because one, two, three, four is more agile than two, three, four, five. That's that rule we talked about. Use more agile fingers for faster passages if you can. Utilize those. This easier than this. And another example where you can utilize the symmetrical fingering is from Mozart Sonata in F major, number 12. 3, 2, and then 4, 3, 2, 1. Instead of, for example, something like this, which is, first of all, uncomfortable because these four fingers are less agile than these four. Plus, it's not symmetrical, so it's going to be disbalanced a little bit. Another example of symmetrical fingering from Johann Sebastian Bach, A minor English suite, the jig, in measures 6 through 11. I'm going to play slowly. You can see it's not symmetrical everywhere, but the segment is mostly symmetrical. So you can see from here, slowly, this is the symmetrical part starts here. And then I treated this as a scalar, a scalar passage, scalar fingering. So 
symmetrical, 3 plus 5, right? And here's 5 plus 3. And then again, same here, you just continue, and then scalar again. You could treat it differently, but still employ uh, the symmetrical fingering. So let's say we keep this as is, and then this passage you could actually th treat as two groups of four notes. Then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And this way, actually, it's a little bit easier to go from four to two versus going from five to two is a bit harder because it's a uh, farther away distance. We need it, the tempo is going to be quick. So check yourself is a fast tempo what's more comfortable, let's say, if you're choosing between these two options. For me, that's okay. Let's check the other one. See, I made a mistake here a little bit for maybe because I'm used to the other fingering because I already chose it. That's possible. Or because this perhaps is less comfortable for me. So I'm going to stick with the uh, finger for the scale. And I just have to practice this spot. Point number seven. For any sequential or, in other words, repetitive pattern type of movement, try to retain the same fingering for the same pattern. Especially it is useful when choosing fingerings for passages with repetitive motific or rhythmic pulsation. And here are some examples. So where is the sequential movement? One, two, three, four. And another one, two, three, four with embellishment. Now one, two, three, four. And I'm using the same fingers. Instead of, for example, doing this. What did I do here? I went with an, uh, actually, with a scale fingering instead of. A uh, second example would be here, and it's this. My sequence here four four notes going down four three two one so why is there a change here because there's a black note and it's trying to um, go in accordance to the black note thumb rule to avoid it so you can do this as written again that rule with the thumb right or you could even bypass it if your thumb is agile enough. I think I actually played this way. I just kept those uh, repetitive finger. Number eight. If the passage is to be played staccato in the end, which is this kind of attack, which is short, sharp, quick attack with a bounce. Or if the passage needs to be played non legato, which is just disconnected keystrokes like this. When you choose fingerings for the passage, still choose it in the legato mode. Just play through the passage legato and see which fingers you would choose then and just apply the same fingers in the staccato or non legato. Why? Because this will create the most natural position for your hand and the most comfortable. Because I could play the scale with thumb, like I think I mentioned before. If, maybe even fast, so, right? But how much effort will it take for me to do it? Where if I use even staccato, of course I'm, I'm gonna use this type of fingering, right? Point number nine. When you have a passage that is being divided between the two hands or multiple passages like that, our goal is to avoid the audibly noticeable connection between them and to create the most connectivity, the least noticeable seam, so-called. The best way to achieve that, if it is possible, given the context of the passage and given the notes, is between the same fingers in the, same, in the two hands, because this will create a, like a unanimity of the attack and of the sound quality you get as a result. So for example, most likely it's already those passages are already designed in such a way where one hand becomes the extension of the second hand. And that way, because they connect 
on these two fingers, most likely is going to be from thumb to thumb. It's very, very common, right? So like the list example I gave you before, or something like this, right? Or this list. Right? Or yeah, thumb to thumb, right? But even when you have a choice, so, for example, this Mozart passage uh, from the F major sonata, So this is where I also use thumb, even though I don't have to here, I could go from thumb to two, could, but this is much better. I can control that better because it creates the balance between the hands. And the last point, number 10 very useful in long, arduous, virtuosic passages. And I call it creating a resting point over the thumb. It will take the pressure off your hand by releasing that one position and going to the next. So you, tr you want to avoid extended position for a long period of time. What do I mean by extended position? So if you have a passage, something like this, where you could play it using fingers in order, all five. However, it creates a strain in the hand, you have to stretch a lot, it creates tension and discomfort. If it's not something where you have to do it like this, you know, the, etude, uh, the Chopin etude, where it's specifically designed to train that ability of playing the extended position for a long time, you have a choice to avoid it, then try to do it using your thumb, meaning something like this. Like much better. Yeah, you have to somehow smooth in that transition, but yet you can even do this. Yeah. It creates a lighter, more flexible flow in the passage. And there are some more examples here for you. Simple. So F, G, F, E, F, G, A. Right? So those four notes. What we could do in this test with three, and if we were to stay in the natural position, we would just do this, next finger, next note. I could make it sound nicer, of course. But look what he suggests. Three here, and then one here. What does it do? It creates more flexibility in your hand, because when you go like this, look, well, of course you can go up. That's it. But these three fingers are next to each other. They are very, very connected. And there's not much flexibility involved in the movement. You can just do this. You're limited in terms of your hand is, let's say, a little bit frozen, so to put it. But when you create this, look how much more plastic it becomes. And it becomes much more expressive. And I can also control the next note better. Three, four, versus five, four from five. It's a little bit harder to get up the hand. These are all very little nuances, but they're very important. Um, so this sounds better, not just um, expressively it sounds better, but also it feels better for the hand. It's more restful movement. Second example. So the note would be So what he suggests is put one on G. For a second, let's ignore that and let's just think what would be then one position, most natural way to do it without ch changing any position. So it would be like this. Right? So that would be if we were trying to avoid the position change. However, that creates a, little, a, a lot of stretch and it's a bit tense. I feel tension here. I could do it. But I need to do it faster, and remember, choosing your fingers in a fast tempo, right? Have a stretch here, a bit of a stretch, and then here again, stretch. And then even more. So what he suggests is one, that's very comfortable, natural, and then two over. So you need two more fingers to finish, right? 
very good feeling for the hand. And here. That's also very natural. Five fingers, five notes, right? An extension a little bit. I can be more flexible and control the notes. I have more air in between, more agile. Versus. Next example is here. I'm gonna show you the notes first. natural position which occurs when you see those notes and you think okay let me try the most natural you always want to try the natural way first and see how that feels and if it doesn't feel good then try to adjust so let's check again so I'm gonna change from two to one here because as I said repeating with the same fingers not as comfortable it's better to interchange not use the same fingers too too often so we're gonna change here, but that's not the point. The point is whether I wanna do this. Especially here. So how does this feel? For me, I have a smaller hand, so maybe if you have a bigger hand, that's not a problem. It's individual for everybody. But for me, that feels a little bit straining here. It's a bit of a stretch. Let's see if I can avoid that by putting thumb somewhere. This is much more comfortable. I have three fingers in between versus one finger. The more fingers, more control you have between the keys, right? That creates more agility, more plasticity of your movement here. I feel better and I can control the C better. I can control how it sounds. Let me see if I can use the same thing here. Versus. It's okay, but why not this? It creates a better shape of that line. It sounds lovely. How about this? It sounds okay, but to me this is more rigid than this. So with these options, you can test what feels better for your hand and choose the fingering that is comfortable for you. Okay, that's it for part two. I hope this was useful and I do hope my explanation was clear enough. Please leave your feedback and comments below. As usual, I'll be happy to read them and I will try to improve in my next video. I will see you in part three. And this is where I will mention the last five points on technical fingering. And I thank you for watching.